Now, here's the key. We all do the same stuff, right? Sure, you go to Walmart, I go to Walmart. We got to get gas. We got to kill the wasps that formed underneath the, uh, you know, the item outside. We've got to, you know, we've got to do the yard work and do all of that. But here's the thing, my friend. If my mind is already set on the things of God, I can, it can, I can be doing all of those things and still communing with the Lord and still being with Him, right? Amen. And that's what the Lord wants us, to set our mind on Him. But if I set my mind, or if there's someone who sets their minds on, on the things of the flesh, they start feeding their mind with, uh, you know, R-rated movies and, you know, different television shows. And, you know, even if you watch the news too long, hello? If you watch the political debate too long, and you start listening to the commentators too long. Let me tell you what happens pretty soon. A little bit of that gets into you. And all of a sudden you start getting upset with them. Whoever them is. And, and you're on this side and they're over there. And uh, you, it, can, it can agitate your whole world. I'm just here today to tell you. Don't feed the flesh. Because the flesh will lead to death. How many of you are hearing me today? And I'll tell you. It's not always just the Bible. Now don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I gave a big shot for the Bible. Come on. If you got a Bible, wave it at me today. I know some of you are going to get your e-book out, your tree book out, whatever it is. Amen. You, you know, you need the Word. But you can program your mind with all kinds of good things. Philippians says this, Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest and just and pure and lovely and of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things, right? Right. I mean, it can be some wholesome music. It can be a wholesome movie. It can be good conversation. Uh, you, you can start reading about how to make a, you know, how to make a cherry pie or an apple pie or you know, any good thing that's out there. Come on, some Chinese food. I, I don't know what you like to create in your house. But I, all of these things are good and healthy and wholesome. Come on, can we just give a hand, a big hand of praise for Jesus? Amen. So we program our mind. How many of you see in the progression? We accept what Christ has done for us, that we were united with Him. We reckon ourselves dead to sin. We start reprogramming our mind. And then there's the fourth thing that we've got to do is that we use the members of our bodies to serve God. You know what the members of your bodies are? Every piece of your body. And here's the key here. There's not a person in this room who, before you knew Christ, right? Before in your BC days, as we say, right? You took the members of your body, your hands, your feet, your ears, your eyes, your legs, your arms, and you used those members of your body to serve sin. Sure, we did. All of us did, right? And I, and I, thought, I thought, you know, about the, the slaves, once again, when they were emancipated, you know, I'm sure that the next day they got up and said, now what do we do? They said, well, I guess we're going to do the same thing we've always done. They just started, you want to know why? That was their habit. That's what they did. That's what they did. They, but until, until they learned that they could do something else with their bodies, they were not really free, right? And, 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 and we were slaves to sin if we believe the word. And God knows that it's not just enough to set us free. What God wants to do is have us be active in using the members of our body to serve God. Romans 6, 12 and 13 says this, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey its less. And you know, we, people quote that and read that and we think, okay, don't let it rain, don't let it rain, don't let it... That's not what it's saying, you got to read the next verse. It says, and do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. In other words, you get up in the morning and you say, okay, Lord, I'm presenting myself to you. I'm a living sacrifice for you my whole life belongs to you I was bought with a price the shed blood of Jesus these hands they're your hands these feet are your feet what do you want me to do I'm presenting the members of my body I used to, used to be uh, active in sin but as instruments 
uh, you know, let me, they used to be uh, as being alive from the dead. They used to be dead, but now they're alive. And so I'm presenting them as members, as instruments of righteousness to God. Amen? The next few verses, he says this. He said, Romans 6, 19, he says, I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. I'm telling you, these are some of the most powerful principles that you'll ever find. You know why? Because when you, you, you can't, your members of your body can't be involved in sinful things when you're using them to do good things, right? When you're using them to serve your family, when you're using them to serve your husband or your wife, when you're using them to do something productive and good, uh, you know, when you're using them to serve your neighbor, to help somebody out, to do something. Let me tell you something, your whole body, your whole mind is engaged in that. I'm just telling you, this is the way to freedom, my friend. This is the way to live out the promise that whom, if the Son makes you free, you'll be free indeed. And then the last thing we've got to do is we cannot make provision for the flesh. Are you still with me? In other words, don't give the devil a stick to hit you with. <laughs> right? If you know you're weak in a certain area and you walk into temptation in that area, you're, 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 you're not using wisdom. You're walking into an ambush. Get out of harm's way. Romans 13, 14 says this, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. Now, I don't know how many of you guys ever saw the old TV show called Hee Haw. Anybody ever seen Hee Haw? Well, old Doc Campbell is confronted by a patient, and he says this. He said that he broke his arm in two places. And the doc replies, well, then stay out of them places. <laughs> he may have something there, right? We cannot regularly put ourselves in the face of temptation and not be affected, right? When faced with the problem of temptation, we need to take the good doctor's advice and stay out of them places. Some people fall into temptation, like the little boy who... His, his dad, he, he told him, he said, son, don't swim in the canal. Okay, dad, he answered, but he came home the next day carrying a wet bathing suit that evening. And his dad said, where you been? Swimming in the canal, answered the boy. Didn't I tell you not to swim there? Asked the father. Yes, sir, answered the boy. Well, why did you? Well, Dad, I had my bathing suit with me, and I couldn't resist the temptation. Well, why did you take your bathing suit with you, he asked. So I'd be prepared to swim just in case I was tempted. <laughs> Wait a minute. What did that young man do? He made provision for the flesh. <laughs> Amen. Don't go to them places. Let me tell you something. I believe that this is one of the key things to live in a successful Christian life. To believe the word of God that says, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Would you stand with me today? Thank you for letting me just go ahead.